You cannot work out for your vertical jump every single day. You're going to sit here and tell me that you can play basketball, you can do skills training on top of working out every single day for your vertical jump. No, that is a recipe for disaster. So then that raises the question, well, how many days per week should we train for our vertical jump? For speed, power, strength, explosiveness, vertical jump in general, what is the magic number? How many times should we be working out every single week? Well, I'll tell you right now, there is no magic number because people have different rates of recovery. However, I have found that the sweet spot for myself and most athletes that I train is two to three main workouts every single week. So when I program workouts for my athletes, I like to program main workouts and minor workouts. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we normally do main workouts and Wednesday is sometimes a little bit lighter. So Monday, Friday are the most intense, the most intense on our tendons, our muscles, our central nervous system. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday are what I like to call minor workouts where we are still training, but it is more of an active recovery day. We might do some hip flexor work. We might train the adductors, the abductors. We might do some core. You could do upper body on this day. You could do, you know, some light skills training. You can do, um, different types of workouts on this day, but the main point for minor workouts is you do not want to fatigue and break down your tendons, your muscles, your central nervous system any further. The workouts that you do on these days should assist in your recovery and assist in you increasing your vertical jump without breaking down your body any further. And then Sunday is just a rest day. You can go for a walk, do whatever you want to do on Sunday, go to church, get crazy, uh, but Sunday is a rest day. So this workout that you are seeing right now, this was a minor workout in my Beyond the Rim 2 vertical jump training program. So we started with reverse dead mills and an isometric choice. I like to do a wall sit. Um, I do this every single day regardless, sometimes even on Sundays on my rest day. But I like to do two minutes of reverse dead mills to warm up my knees, warm up my tendons. And then I superset with 45 seconds of any isometric. Like I said, I like to do wall sits, but a Spanish squat would work. A reverse Nordic hold would work. A single leg knee extension would work. There's a lot of isometrics that will work. However, I like to do wall sits just because it is very easy and double leg exercises take half the time as single leg exercises. So reverse dead mills, isometric choice, three times Times through two minutes for reverse dead mills, 45 seconds for isometric choice. This is the best knee warm up that you will ever experience in your life. Plus, this is going to be the main key. I'm telling you, isometrics are the main key to you fixing your knee pain. After that, I did some low intensity dunks just because I do like to dunk even on my minor days, although it is very, very light. I am not putting the rim high. I actually went from seven feet six inches to eight feet six inches. Uh, two inches at a time. So I went seven, six, seven, eight, seven, ten, eight foot, eight, two, eight, four, eight, six. And I did one jump off of each approach. So my right foot, my left foot, my right, left, two foot approach, and my left, right, two foot approach. So very, very easy, but I do want to get some very low level jump volume on my minor workout days. And if you don't have a hoop with an adjustable uh, rim, then you can just do approach jumps by jumping in the air, or even better, you can do approach box jumps and jump onto a box so that you minimize the force from the landing and you land on that box. It is very easy on your knees and better than landing on the ground, especially for your minor days. After that, I did a hip swivel for two sets of 10 reps each direction. So this is just me challenging um, my internal and external rotation of my hips. I have very poor mobility, so I should do this more than just on minor days. Um, but hip swivel, two sets of 10 reps, superset with a lunge elbow to instep hold for five seconds with a rotation. So I'm holding that lunge el elbow to instep for five seconds. And then I'm holding the rotation hold for five seconds as well. And then I repeat that three times each leg. And then I go through it again one more time with the hip swivels and one more time with the lunge elbow to instep with rotation hold. After that, I hooked up two resistance bands, one very light band and one heavy band to my cable machine. You could hook it up to a squat rack, anchor it to anything that is not going to move, but you need to anchor one high and one low. And I did a split stance cable rotation drill and I superset 
offset that with a payoff press. So I did three sets of 10 reps each side for a split stance cable rotation being very explosive with this drill. So you just get in a wide receiver stance with your outside leg, the leg that is farthest away from the anchored band. Um, you want your outside leg to be forward and your inside leg to be backwards. Wide receiver stance, then you're going to do these explosively. So if you use too heavy of a band, it's not going to work. You want it to be light, but heavy enough to add some resistance. Then I supersetted that with payload off press. This is a great one for your core. Um, go heavy with this one. Make sure you are going slow. If you go too fast, it is not going to do the same thing. You want to go slow and controlled and challenge yourself uh, for three sets of 10 reps of the payoff press. So three sets of 10 split stance cable rotation, three sets of 10 payoff press, uh, super set of these, and you want to do these each side. After that, I did an assisted Copenhagen plank, a normal Copenhagen plank. I would not have my other leg on the ground underneath. I would just be using my top leg. But for the assisted Copenhagen plank, this is going to strengthen the groin. Um, it's going to strengthen your adductors, and it's going to be great for your core. So I did two sets of 30 seconds each side for an assisted Copenhagen plank. Then I did an explosive band hip flexor drill for two sets of 10 reps each leg. So you're going to get a light band. And you're going to anchor it to uh, the bottom of your cable machine or your squat rack or your railing or whatever you anchor it to. You want to anchor it low. Then I was just challenging explosive knee drive. So act like you are going to go up for a one foot dunk or act like you're sprinting. Just accelerate your knee to the top of the rep as fast as you can. And it also helps me to move my hands as fast as I can. I feel that if I move my hands fast and I try to move my knee faster than my hands, which you're not going to be able to do, but it's just a mental cue for me to be as explosive as possible. After that, I did a hip flexor to hamstring rock. So I'm doing some active stretching for my hip flexor. And at the same time, a little bit of active stretching for my hamstring. And I did two sets of 10 reps each leg. Then I did a few stretches. I did a 90, 90 stretch for one set of 60 seconds each time. And I am focusing on pressing my knee into the ground while I stretch this entire time. So the entire 60 seconds, I am jamming my knee into the ground or the side of my knee into the ground. Then I did a hamstring stretch for 60 seconds and I'm squeezing my quads for the entire 60 seconds. I did a squat stretch where I just explored my mobility a little bit. Like I said, I have very, very poor mobility and flexibility. So I need to work on this. You might not need to do the stretching at the end of the day. Um, if you are, you know, if you have good mobility and good flexibility, you might not need to do this. However, for me, I definitely, definitely need to do this. Then I did um, some calf pumps on a slant board just to stretch my calves a little bit. And that was it for this workout. As you can see, none of this is really going to break down my tendons, my muscles, my central nervous system, but it is going to help me increase my vertical jump overall. And all of these exercises are going to be fine to do on my off days from my main workouts where I am going intense. So once again, the main point that I want you to take away from this video is that you need to have high intensity days and low intensity days. I don't necessarily care what you do on your high intensity days or your low intensity days, but you can't have high intensity days every single day of the week. You will just break down your tendons, your muscles, your central nervous system. And if you break down your tendons, you're going to start getting knee pain and maybe some Achilles tendon pain. And if you break down your central nervous system, you're going to start to feel sluggish. You'll start to feel slower. Your vertical jump will go down, down, down. So you have to have high intensity days and low intensity days to see best results. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see in the next video and I will see you guys tomorrow.